Rabbeim. So um, I see in the back this Adla Yoda. It's a good way to state this. Start, start the day. We're in uh, we're in Adar Rishon. So the question is, it says Mishnah Nas Adar. Ma'akim Semcha. Everybody knows that when Adar comes in, we should become happier. The Shulchan Aruch doesn't tell us how. <laughs> when it comes to Av, Mishnah Nas Av, we're Ma'akim Besimcha. The Shulchan Aruch tells us you can't drink wine for nine days, you can't eat meat in the nine days, you can't shave in the nine days, you can't have music in the three weeks, you can't make weddings. So when it comes to Mematim the Simcha, to have less happiness, they tell us how to do that. But it just says, Mishinich Nasad, Obama Simcha, what should you do? Um, you start off the day smiling, maybe sing Smiros. Doesn't say. Just says Mishnah Nazar the Mama Musim. So I heard a very beautiful terrace. You take the word Besimcha, the same letters as Besimcha, spell Machshava. Same exact letters in the word Besimcha, spell Machshava. Mishnah Nazar Marvin Bemachshava. You have to change your thinking process. If you change your thinking process, it'll make you the simcha. What is that thinking process? What's the nase of Purim? The nase of Purim is a nase nister. It's a hidden nase. Hashem's name is not mentioned clearly in the Holy Ghost Esther. It says Hamelech. When we learn from there, when it says Hamelech, it doesn't say Achashverosh. It means Hashem, but that's already Kabbalistic. But Hashem's name is not mentioned. And if you look at the story itself, it could be a story about any Persian king. There's jealousy, and you learn history a lot in the, in, the, in the Persian Empire, and in the Roman Empire, and all these empires. There was all kinds of treachery, all kinds of stuff going on. So you don't really see Hashem's hand in the nation of Purim. Boys, that's the machshava that should bring you happiness. That knowing that Hashem is Nistar, and that what looks like a regular day, and looks like it's normal, and everything's going, you know, the way it goes, you should understand that if everything that's Nistar, that's him, of course, there's a miracle, you're going to be happy. If someone has a miracle, he makes a Sudaida. But you don't make a Sudaida that you wake up in the morning, and you you can see, and you can hear, because it's hidden. You don't really see that it's a miracle. In the month of Adar, represents Nes Nistar, we appreciate the things that are hidden. What greater simcha could a person have knowing that Hashem is hashkoch on him all the time, that he's watching him all the time. So it's not a change in drinking wine. You don't it doesn't say in Adar you should wake up every morning and drink wine. It's a change in your thought process. And the change in your thought process that in this month, we appreciate the hidden. The Nistar. Heard a very nice word. What's the difference between emuna and bitachon? It both means belief. What's the actual difference? So to explain it, the easy way we all understand emuna is the thought process, and I believe, and bitachon is the action process of doing something because you believe. But I heard a very beautiful word. So there was this man in the circus, and he used to walk the tight wire. I don't know if you've ever been to a circus, but this is like wire, very thin wire, and it's three stories high, even higher than this roof. And the man walks across the circus, to ba- and he balances himself, he has a stick. And he balances himself, and he walks all the way across the circus on this tight wire, and if they're really good, they're able to stand on one foot on this tight wire and hop, they ride a unicycle, it's a whole circus thing. One day, a huge company came to this, the best tightrope walker, and they said to him, we're doing an advertisement, we're willing to pay you a million dollars, but you have to walk the tightrope across the Grand Canyon. Now, I don't know if you guys ever saw the Grand Canyon. If you fall, it takes two weeks to hit the bottom. It's that far down. 
<laughs> so he turned to his friend in the circus. He said, I do it every day without a net underneath me. What's the difference? If I fall in the circus, I'm also going to die. I'm getting a million dollars. You think I should do it? His friend tells him, you're the man. There's no better type worker in the world than you. You are actually, you're able to hop on one foot. Go for it. He says, okay, would you come to me? Would you come with me? Sure. They come to the Grand Canyon. They have this tightrope all the way across the Grand Canyon. All the cameras, everybody's there, everybody's watching. They wire a million dollars into his account. And he looks down, he's like, oh my God, uh, that's pretty scary. And he turns to his friend and he goes, you sure I should do this? His friend says, I believe in you! You're the man! Come on, get on that tightrope! Did you really believe in me? He says, yeah, I really believe in you! He turns to his friend, tightrope worker, he says, you sure you believe in me? Like 100%? He goes, absolutely. He goes, great, get on my shoulders. <laughs> He's like, are you crazy? You should get on your shoulders over the Grand Canyon? But you said you believe in me. That's the difference between Emunah and Bitochon. Emunah is, yes, I believe, I believe, I believe. Bitochon is getting on his shoulders. It's a different step. It's trust. Trust me, you get on my shoulders. I'm not getting on your shoulders. Anyway, it's a marshal, but I know kids like to know the ending. Yes, he made it across the Grand Canyon. So I want to tell you a short story so you can go to breakfast about a man that I knew very well who had a muna and mitoko. And that was my father, Om Shalom. I want to tell you a story with my father. It was his yard site not that long ago. And it has to do with Davani. My father, Om Shalom, Yitzhak Menachem Shmuel Akbayin, never ever missed a minion. He was very makbid. He would never go somewhere where there was no minion. There were times in business, he was a businessman, he wasn't a rabbi, he wasn't a rabbi, he was a businessman, but he didn't miss minion. There were times that he actually came here for business to the Midwest, and he, he realized that to fly back to New York, he wouldn't be able to make Minton higher. But it was too early to dive in here because there's a change of time, it's an hour difference, and you gotta take the flight, which is two and a half hours, and it would be dark, it would miss Minfa. So my father would fly to the West Coast, backwards, to LA, to grab the extra two hours, so he could dive in Minfa in LA, and then he would take the red eye from LA to come back to New York in the morning. People thought that was absolutely crazy, but to him, there was no question, he would never miss me. So we, the Wallace family, are in the plastic bag. We, we manufacture plastic shopping bags and different types of bags, paper shopping bags. And we sell them to department stores. It's about, well, I'm 58, so it's got to be about 40 years ago. There was a huge company in America called Petri Stores. Milton Petri, who was the owner of these stores, at that time was, he was totally irreligious, knew nothing about Yiddish guy. But at that time, was the richest Jew in America. If you Google it, you, don't, you, have, any, you have nothing here to Google with. So. But if someone had something to Google, you would see that Milton Petrie, outside of being extremely powerful and very wealthy, was a very big Zionist. He was very into Israel. He had 3,500 stores. It was the biggest bag order that you could get in America. My father, who sold plastic bags, try to get into him, it was impossible. He couldn't get to him. But through the Israeli government, since our bags were manufactured in Eretz Yisrael, through the Israeli government, he finally got himself a meeting. And it was an early dinner with Milton Petrie, this chairman of the board, in a place called Luigi Siegel's, a restaurant in, in Manhattan, one of the only kosher restaurants in those days. So my father has this early meeting with him figuring We'll take about a half an hour as the chairman of the board. He's not going to give him more time than that. And my father comes to the meeting with my, my mother, who was my father's secretary. And they sit down, and Petrie starts talking about Israel and Zionism. And he's talking, and he's talking, and he's talking. And my father's looking at his watch, and he realizes he can't make it back to Muncie from Minchem Meyer. But in those days, in Muncie, 
you had a million minutes by Meyer, that's it. Not a 10 o'clock million or 9 o'clock million for Meyer. You miss with the Meyer, you're done. There was no million factories. But if I looks at his watch, he's like, I'm not gonna make it back to Muncie from Minnesota. But Petrie's sitting there, he's talking. My father knew all the shuls in Manhattan, so he knew that there was a shul a few blocks away. So he told my mother, you talk to him, I'm gonna sneak out, that was Mitzvah Meyeriv, and then I'll come back. So he left the meeting, he excused himself, Petrie thinking my father was going to the bathroom, and my mother sat there for 35 minutes and talked to this man. My father comes back, he sits down, and Petrie says to my father, Wallerstein, where were you? I know you didn't go to the bathroom for 35 minutes. My father looks at him, he's not religious, he knows nothing about Yiddish guy. He says, please excuse me, Mr. Petrie, and there was Milton. I had an appointment with, I, I had a different appointment. But this guy who's chairman of the board, who walked out on me, who could you have gone to meet? I mean, I've never heard of such a thing. You're out to eat with me and you got up and you made another appointment? He was like gonna get up and walk out. Forget about the business. My father says to him, Mr. Petrie, I'm an Orthodox Jew. Every day, I have three appointments with the chairman of the board. Petrie was the chairman of the board, the president of his company. With the chairman of the board of the world. Petrie says, excuse me? My father said, I have three, three times a day I have an appointment with the chairman of the board of the world. In the morning for an hour, in the afternoon and the evening, 15 minutes each. And I really apologize, but Mr. Petrie, I have never missed that appointment. And that appointment has a very specified time. And it was getting late, and I, I'm sorry if you feel you know, that, I'm bad, that I did something wrong, but I just don't miss that appointment. He said, who's the chairman of the board of the world? My father said, God. And you meet with him three times a day? My father said, yes. He said, that's amazing. Come, it's a true story. Come to my office tomorrow, we'll talk about the order. Okay? My father goes to Petrie's store in the middle of Manhattan. <coughs> now, Milton Petrie had an assistant. Her name was Hilda. Hilda, we called her Broom Hilda. Because Hilda was a spinster, which means she wasn't married. She was the meanest woman you ever met. She, she, they had, you know, they had a water fountain. It said above it, if you use this cup today, you use the cup all day and all week, keep it by your desk. She wouldn't even give two plastic cups to a person. She was so cheap, but she built the company. He was, you know, a nice guy. She was impossible. So my father goes up to Petrie and he says, he calls in Hilda. Hilda walks in. He, my father never met her. She walks in. He's off and tough. She says, who's that? He says, it's Mr. Wallace. What is he doing here? He's here to sell us a uh, contract you know, for bags. Why should we buy bags from him? So Petrie looks at Hilda and he says, she, she says, Hilda, this man sitting here, you're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. He has an appointment with the chairman of the board of the world three times a day. She says, that's ridiculous. What are you saying? He's an Orthodox Jew, and he has an appointment, and he doesn't miss it, ever. And my father was a yekka. He was never late either. He's never late for that appointment, and God forbid, while he's talking to the chairman of the board of the world, he's not talking to anyone else. He never talked by Dominic, ever. And I sat next to him, and I didn't either. <laughs> so Petrie turns to Hilda, he says, I want you to give Mr. Wallerstein a contract for all our stores. That's three and a half thousand stores. For all our stores for the next three years. You're talking about millions and millions of dollars. My father was dreaming about one year. He's giving three years. Hilda says, Mr. Petrie, I gotta price him out. I gotta get at least three other quotes to see if his bags are the right price. And Petrie says to Hilda, you don't understand. I am sure that the competition doesn't talk to the chairman of the board of the world even once a day. 
We need to trust this man if he's dealing with the chairman of the board of the world. We had that business for 15 years. Never did they go out to quotes against my father's company. The reason I'm telling you this, that's Emuna and Bitaha. And I said it yesterday, I have to tell you something. I think in my heart that my father wanted to lose the order because he went out to David Menken Meyer. He would have probably been happier to be able to turn to Hashem and say, I just lost a multi-million dollar order. You know why? Because I David Menken Meyer. I think he would have been happier than even getting the order. Because that's how he thought. He had Bitochon, he had Amunah. So the Machshava that I'm asking all of you, the Mishinifnas Adam Mabam Besimcha, the Machshava that we should have is to understand that every morning when you walk in here and you sit down to Daven and you Daven Mincha and Myri, you should feel like my father felt. You should feel, oh my goodness, I have an appointment called Shachar's Mincha and Meyer. I have an appointment with the chairman of the board of the world. And it's not for bags. And it's not for money. It's for something much more precious. It's for life. I'm meeting the chairman of the board for life. And if we do that, there's no question that this Adar will be different. And we know that the Gaula comes in Nisan. But before you can have the Gaula in Nisan, right, because the miracle in Nisan was Nigla, before you can come to the Gaula in Nisan, you have to spend a month in the Gaula of Nistar. The reason that we're gonna have a Gaula of Nigla is because we have a, a month of Nistar. We're going to Zaycha to always be able to speak to the chairman of the board of the world and that he should bring Mashiach, thank you very much.